Hey, what's up guys, Paulo Munoz here and welcome to the last video on this mini series on the Adobe 3D tools. This video is all about rendering and I'm going to show you how I set up the project in Adobe 3D Stager with all the lights and the shading and all of that. So it's a lot of fun. Um, it's a really good software. I love the simplicity of it and the quality that you get from it. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here we are in 3D Stager. I just went ahead and drag and drop the FBX with the low res mesh into the 3D viewport. And you can select the whole mesh and use the manipulators to scale and move and rotate the whole scene. Now, a couple of things that you notice that are different from the original file that, um, that I showed you in ZBrush is that this file has a bunch of like water drops and also some fibers along the, the branch. But again, this is because this was a testing project. So I was testing a bunch of different things like refraction and, and that sort of thing. Uh, but I completely removed that towards the end. So uh, you can ignore it for now. So one thing that I like to do um, is focus on one material or one shader at a time. So I just hit everything using the, the visibility toggle and just left the, the lizard or the skin by itself. And I changed the environment light by dragging and dropping from the library to something that is more suitable for the type of show that I'm looking for. So kind of like a forest or jungle type of thing. Now, setting up materials or shaders in 3D Stager is super easy. You can just go to the starter asset library where you have all your materials and literally just drag and drop them onto the mesh. So for this lizard, I started with the template of a subsurface scattering material and I started bringing all the textures that I created from Substance Painter into 3D Stager. So obviously the base color goes to the base color, the normal map goes to the normal and so on and so forth. Now, one of the fancy cool things about the 3D Stager is the ray tracing rendering. So I wanted to test that and take advantage of all the translucency and scattering effect. So all you have to do is go to the material and enable translucency. And then within the settings of the translucency property, you can go ahead and enable subsurface scattering and, you know, the scaling distance and all of that good stuff. And keep in mind that once you do this a couple of times, it becomes a pretty straightforward process. But at the time I was literally using this as a, as a testing ground. So I was moving all the sliders. So you probably see me doing a lot of things that um, are not necessary in the, you know, for the final shot. Now for this type of materials, I like to turn on and off the ray tracing uh, within Stager just so that I can see a more realistic representation of the material. Um, but you know, it's not ideal to keep it on all the time. This is something that I would only uh, enable towards the end, or like I said, when I'm testing different materials that, that have a, um, a more advanced setup uh, with, you know, specific things like subsurface scattering or translucency where you can change the index of refraction, that sort of things. Um, it's better to see the real effect of the material by enabling the ray tracing. Now, the next setup is exactly the same. Uh, this is for the for the thorn bog, uh, I just dropped a, a new material and in that new material or default material, I brought in all the maps that I exported from Substance Painter. And this is literally the same thing for all the different pieces that make up this bog. And hopefully this shows you, um, you know, the simplicity, but at the same time, the power of this tool. Um, you know, setting up those materials, once you bring in the textures from Substance Painter is extremely easy. It's basically drag and drop the maps into the specific areas of the material and you're good to go. You don't have to do a lot of tweaking. And this is one of the things that I like about this workflow that it's very easy to set up and you can spend the rest of the time playing with the lights or uh, finding the right camera angle. But in terms of what the materials are and the settings that you have to tweak um, are pretty limited. So the fact that it's quite simple, that's actually a good thing. And in this part, you see me tweaking a little bit of the, um, the coding. And this is something that, uh, again, I was just playing around with different options and, and testing different things. But uh, for example, if you're doing like a, like a car surface or something like that, you can enable this uh, extra layer of coding and configure the roughness of that very thin layer separately from the rest of the textures, for example, that you exported from Substance 3D Painter. So that's kind of like the effect that you see uh, more prominent here on the uh, bug eye. Now, here's where you can see me playing around with uh, something else. Again, uh, you can ignore this part because I didn't use it towards the end, uh, but I was just testing how the 3D stager handled uh, transparency and that sort of thing in a single plane. So I just created a single plane and brought in a bunch of images that I created as a material, as a PBR material from 3D sampler. Um, and I just literally took like, I think it was um, a dragonfly wing, I believe, and I created a material out of it. So I generated the, the normal map, the transparency, all of that within 3D Sampler. And just using a plane, like you can see here, I was trying to recreate uh, what it could be some kind of wings. Uh, but again, obviously, this is just a made up creature. Uh, I was even adding four different wings. 
And at the end, it didn't really fit that well within, you know, the, the entire look and feel of this creature or this, uh, this bug. But in terms of what I was trying and testing, um, I think the, the transparency and all of that worked really well. But again, uh, I decided not to use this, not because it didn't work in terms of the, you know, the technicality of it, but it's just in terms of the design didn't feel right, so I just decided to um, to went back to ZBrush and sculpted those uh, those wings and bring them back into um, Substance 3D Stasia. And for the branch again, pretty much the same thing. Just add a default material and bring some of those um, maps or those textures maps that were created from Substance Painter, and you get a pretty convincing effect for the material straight away. And once I had most of the assets with the materials, I started bringing some lights and again, testing out what the, what the final look and feel of this image was going to be or like the renderer. So I brought in a physical light, a directional light, and that's going to be my key light that, you know, I, I don't really need more than that. Um, again, I'm just trying to recreate kind of like those uh, nature uh, close-up shots. So a nice key light coming from the top right, maybe uh, slightly from the back, uh, that would be a you know, it will enhance the silhouette of the entire um, entire scene. So that's what I went for. And the reason I like to do this at this point is because having a strong key light allows me to fine tune the materials a little bit further. So I can just leave the light on and concentrate on things like the translucency and the quality of the materials, uh, just to make sure that it works with the with the current lighting. And another thing you can do to see the effect of the single light a little bit better is to turn off or uh, reduce the influence of the environment. And you can do that from the environment app. Again, this part is just playing around with those fiber mesh uh, that I exported from ZBrush uh, just to see how it handled. But, you know, I'm, I'm not going to use that. The, the branch is not necessarily a, a fairy branch. It has a, it's a, it has a different material, so I just removed this altogether. But yeah, it's, a, it's, it's good to know that it can handle like a firm, fair amount of polygons and you could potentially do something with fiber mesh uh, quite easily. All right, so just to wrap up here, I'm adding a couple of materials, one to the main uh, mesh of the eye. That's the one that I projected an image uh, into the eye, nothing fancy. Uh, this is literally just a, an image that I put into Photoshop and I exported it. And that's it, it doesn't have multiple maps, it's just a, literally one image. And the, the rest of the effect to create that realism on the eye and the reflection, that is an extra mesh. So it's just another sphere that is slightly bigger and it sort of like encompasses the entire eye. And I just added a water material and then you can just obviously tweak the index of refraction to, uh, to distort that pupil or to distort the eye a little bit more. Uh, but that is pretty much it. And the effect is, is pretty convincing towards the end when you enable the rendering. Now, this little snippet, again, is me just testing different things, uh, enabling the render with GPU, uh, changing different presets like draft, full quality, that sort of thing. But again, this is just more testing than setting anything up. And the final stage of the process really uh, for me is just creating a new camera, which is pretty easy to do here in 3D Stager. Just click on a new camera and you can start framing that camera for the final shot. I also went to the Onsplash website and found a pretty cool and simple image that, uh, that could work as a background. And in Photoshop, I just added a little bit more blur and did some tweaks of the, of the lighting and the contrast and exported that as a single PNG that I dropped into the background of this project here in 3D Stager. And having a background image really helps to uh, fine tune the lighting on this setup, especially to make sure that everything feels integrated and, and part of the same thing because ultimately I was gonna use the same background for, um, for all the shots. And once I had the camera uh, kind of like set up in the way that I wanted to create at least one of the renders, I realized that I needed a bit more of a feature light. So I created a spotlight that emphasized the subject of this uh, render a little bit more. And you can barely see the difference. Uh, but again, it's just about the subtleties in this case. So you have the key light, which is this directional light that is producing the, the shadows and, and the main source of light and all of that. And then on top, you have a spotlight that, you know, brings in additional highlights and it's just a very, very subtle addition to the, to the final render. And finally, to complete the effect of these renders, I selected the camera and enabled the depth of fill. And that obviously is gonna uh, recreate that sort of nice photographic effect and you know, bring it closer to um, what the initial intention was, uh, which is kind of like a nature shot of like a tiny bug or you know, something quite small. And that's when you can see the very exaggerated uh, depth of fill with the, with the blurry background and, and that sort of thing. 
All right, so that's pretty much it in terms of the rendering. Hopefully you have found some value in this and the rest of the videos of this series. Uh, I just wanted to give you a, a breakdown of this specific project that I use uh, as my testing ground for these Adobe 3D tools. And if you're interested in learning this type of tools and workflows, what I would recommend is to do pretty much what I did, just uh, come up with a project, the simpler the better, and just taking it all the way through uh, all the different tools. And I can guarantee you, you'll learn a lot just by testing different things. Um, that's pretty much what I did with this project. So hopefully this series has been of help. Let me know if you're interested in seeing more of this type of content and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.